Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, we get the odds of the Big 12 tournament for the Red Raiders and who's getting the love on their side of the bracket. Next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Everything runs through love. Great to be with you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day day with the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan. Chris, great to see you again on what for Red Raiders is Casey Eve, married to those who celebrate. And we're about, well, just a few hours from uh, getting it on for the first time in the Big 12 tournament under Grant McCaslin. And a lot of things to look forward to as we will do here today. We'll get into some odds and ends as far as the Texas Tech chances, some love for their side of the bracket as well. And also want to wrap up with a football conversation that is uh, maybe on the back burner for now, but could uh, come to a boil at some point, I would think, depending on the outcomes of some selections within a Big 12 football schedule. But uh, as we look ahead to the Red Raiders, Chris, uh, really feeling like Texas Tech in a position under Grant McCaslin to roll into this tournament in a bit of a rhythm. Obviously, rather win than lose. And you got three going the right way coming into this. I don't know if I'd call it playing their best basketball at the right time just yet like every team hopes to be when the tournament arrives, but uh, maybe heading towards something like that. Yeah, you know, I, I do think you have some uh, momentum coming into this deal. It's funny how quickly some of this changes because uh, it wasn't a couple of weeks ago. It's like, oh, the wheels are falling off. You, you, you're you injured. You're, you're not winning. It's like, okay, your arrow pointing down, all that stuff, and then you just look up a uh, week and a half later, and it's like, okay, arrow pointing up, and – uh, or I guess better on the seed line, and and you're you're maybe getting a bit healthier here, and and you've you've strung some wins together, a couple on the road, and then a big one at home. And what's fascinating about tournament play is that it, it's a bit of a different style. These are lower scoring games in general. You have to understand that the timeouts in tournament and NCAA tournament play are longer. Uh, a lot of the times, uh, shooting isn't near as good overall. Um, and you know, if you were to play BYU on a on a Thursday morning, you know, both teams really rely on on shot making. Uh, it's kind of their their name of their game. And you know, ne- BYU may have the advantage there just because they will have been in this building and, and got to shoot a, a bit. You know, Texas Tech won't really get an opportunity to go in there and shoot around other than just pregame which is a bit tricky uh, as every other year, you've always been able to get in there and practice and, you know, do a mini shoot around and all that, but it's not going to be uh, available to you. So maybe you go up there a bit earlier on Thursday morning, but in general tournament plays a bit different, but you do come in here with some momentum for sure. I mean, are we to the extent of needing to, to pack the tape measure and get real inspirational <laughs> at the free throw line? No. Not above it. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, Ollie, uh, put uh, get, get on get on uh, his shoulders. That's right. Uh, yeah, that's right. I, I love the tape measure with the you, you're reeling it. There, there's some synergy there because we were in Finkel uh, Hinkle Fields right. earlier. Uh, uh, you know, earlier this year. Um, you know, and 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 they're just sometimes unfamiliar arenas. This the Sprint Center or T-Mobile Arena, I guess, is what it's called now. Is not unfamiliar to some of your guys. Uh, but you only, you know, even the guys that, that did play for you last year only played in that uh, arena one one game. So anyway, just throwing that out there because yeah. doesn't mean it, it will be Texas Tech per se. But I'm just in general, uh, it, it's just something to consider. Uh, but you do come in with some momentum, I think. Uh, but you, you know, other than a couple of years ago, Mark Adams's first year, uh, I think Chris Beard's. Uh, second year you know there's not been a lot of success in recent years at this tournament for texas tech you know i think that year the the elite eight year you went to the uh, semifinals and keenan evans was was a bit dinged up the the back to back to back setup is not ideal when you're dealing with an injured player and and then you know a couple years ago you just you, you met a really good kansas team in the in the finals uh, and Mark Adams' his first year, uh, and that was, you know, you had a good run there because you, like, dominated uh, Iowa State. Then you won a buzzer beater, an ugly game versus Oklahoma 
Uh, I say buzzer beater. You just won a close one, and then and then you got bounced versus Kansas. But uh, that was a lot of fun that year. But other than that, not a lot of success to hang your hat on. But uh, hopefully things will uh, will turn this year. And I think you've got uh, a team in rhythm ready to do that. Uh, I want to get to coming up in just a minute what uh, FanDuel says Texas Tech's odds are going into this thing, Chris. But as far as the odds are concerned uh, for the Red Raiders and for the fan base, uh, I think, you know, really for the most part, feeling uh, encouraged by some of the recent results, but also still understanding a big, big piece that has a big, big question mark beside him. And that's the guy we talked about yesterday in uh, Warren Washington. And I got to say, you know, typically when I think about, boy, what I would love to have on the floor from Warren Washington, I go straight to a seven foot worth of height. It'd be a nice thing to have on the floor. A lot of physical attributes, but I'm kind of thinking this time around, man, I would love to have some more seasoning on the floor. Because I look at Joe Toussaint as maybe one of the most valuable guys to have in the mix, whether it's in the conference tournament or in the national tournament. And I know you've got some experience elsewhere, but and I, I don't know if I'd say, I was kind of considering this after our conversation yesterday, you know, do I call this team an old one, a middle one, a youthish oriented one? Because some of the guys that have come on and actually played a large part, you know, aren't necessarily the old heads. And then you got a guy like say pop who's somewhere there in the middle, kind of slicing it up in that mid range. But, uh, you can never have too much, I don't think, calm, and some of that comes with experience. So a lot on Joe Toussaint's shoulders, but if Washington was back in the mix, I think it's just an added kind of intangible boost for the Red Raiders in a tournament setting. Yeah, a age and experience uh, it certainly pays dividends this time of year. There's just no doubt about it. That's why you, you know, you, you see some of the people talking about, why haven't you signed any high school guys, all that stuff. You just got to be careful with that these days. I mean, a, a nice sprinkling of – of, of those guys within your program is good. But at the end of the day, man, typically this time of year is guard play and it's agent experience that just ultimately wins out. Uh, and it, and it gets you through a conference race and all those things. But, uh, yeah, you know, Joe has provided that all year. He's been through a lot of this. Um, in fact, he was on the team that knocked you out, uh, last year and basically ended, uh, into Texas tech season. Uh, you know, a one and done there up in uh, up in Kansas City, and now he's uh, on your team. So hopefully, he can uh, extend yeah. uh, extend the season uh, quite a bit uh, this year uh, with with that age and experience. But you know, the if, if anybody's going up there to Kansas City, it's an awesome event. I mean, they do a phenomenal job. It's like a basketball junkie's dream. I mean, and that was before the- DJ Diesel. Was in the mix, right? <laughs> yeah, this is pre yeah. DJ Diesel. You know, Brett Yormark, I think, really has leaned into this event conference wide to create a lot of pomp and circumstance. Look, there's a lot of you know, you have the the, the specific food items for each school. There's there's a lot of the entertainment outside and inside the the, the building that comes with this. There's a lot of premium areas within the arena now, and he's made it very. Um, he's tried to cater to a lot of the high-end clientele uh, for courtside seating and club-level stuff. I mean, and so because this is, they really view this as a as a huge opportunity and a money maker, and kind of lean into this event being now what is like a week and a half long celebration of basketball because now the women's tournament is played at this uh, same venue uh, for I believe the first time ever, uh, where, where the men and women are both playing under the same roof. And, and and all that uh, with the, you know gr- the women's championship uh, being played last night uh, after those those two men's games. So uh, and you know you're handing out WWE title belts uh, to MVPs and the team that win it and all the I mean there's just all kinds of extra that comes with uh, with this tournament. But I think that this is really something he's wanting to lean into and and embrace and kind of NBA it up a bit, uh, if, if you will, on 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 its meaning and how much buzz it creates. Okay, there's some pros and cons when I'm thinking about <laughs> NBAing something well, up. Yeah. Uh, but I get what you're saying, and I think it's an untapped opportunity. Yeah. So who who's to say what the ceiling could be uh, from a revenue standpoint or a publicity standpoint? It seems like a general agreement, uh, aside from some whiny ACC figureheads, uh, that you're the best basketball conference in the country. So why not put it on the biggest banner you can find and wave it all over? So I, I like him taking some of these chances and. I'm thinking, too, as you're talking about some of these high-end clientele and whatnot, I'm pretty sure if I saw correctly and remember correctly, uh, the Red Raider assigned food a hamburger, which first and foremost, thank you, Brett, 
for supporting the beef industry. We appreciate that in West Texas. We should support it all over. But ground, where's the T-bone, baby? Let's not skimp on the Texas Tech menu. I'm the Texas Tech T-bone. That's three T's. If two are awesome, three are even better. I mean, it seems like it makes sense. So maybe we can get a Texas Tech T-bone at the concession stand uh, before tip-off. I'll get on that as soon as we're off the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like uh, I think uh, you, like it was like a citronaut soda, like there was like orange sherbet and ice cream was like uh, UCF's yeah. uh, menu. I don't. I, I got a kick out of looking at them all. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I I thought it was because Texas just basically got like a loaded baked potato. I'm like yawn. Um, oh, turd uh, sandwich yeah. for Texas for sure. Yeah, we and we I think our, ours had some barbecue sauce and an onion straw and some sort of <laughs> fancy you know other sauce yeah. or seasoning. I'm not sure, but yeah, I, I think that stuff's kind of fun. And yeah, if, if anybody ever goes up there, man, it's <laughs> uh, you can definitely spend some time. But I, but I I think uh, I think you're in for a potentially very difficult matchup, um, you know, whether it's UCF or Oklahoma state or, or, you know, BYU or wh whatever it was looking like when we saw this bracket, I kind of thought, you know, BYU would ultimately prevail and, you know, they're, they're highly thought of. And I think not just this week, but they're highly thought of by the computers and by the folks that they're going to start picking brackets and stuff next week. Uh, just because of how they play and how kind of outside the box it is. Well, let me tell you how it could shape up if it was Tech and BYU to where, you know, Tech could be considered an underdog in that basketball game after double buys. First, today's episode brought to you by eBay Motors. And eBay Motors has you covered with everything you need to maintain your vehicle and keep that ride or die ride on the road. Or if you're just looking to elevate your car's game to the next level of performance, they got what you're looking for. With roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, superchargers, and accessories of all kinds to fit your style, whether you're looking for speed, power, or design, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts to perfectly fit what you need. So just head over today to ebay.com slash motors, where you're going to always find exactly what you're looking for. And with no risk because of eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit just right every time or your money back, keeping you burning rubber and not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to keep your ride or die ride on the road and moving your life forward at ebay.com slash Motors, eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions do apply. You know, Tech could be considered an underdog in that basketball game after double buys because we were taking a look at these uh, FanDuel Big 12 tournament odds and uh, it was kind of interesting to see not only where Tech uh, landed, but some of those on their wing of the bracket. Houston, of course, number one overall, followed by Iowa State, Baylor, and Kansas. And then it is BYU ahead of Texas Tech, Chris. There's just a lot of love there for the Cougars, as you and I talked about uh, earlier in the week. There's a lot of respect for the Cougars there from us because it took everything you had and then some uh, to get a win over a team at that time uh, that I think you know clearly had not really blossomed into maybe the more consistent team that they have become uh, down the stretch. But uh, it'll be, I would imagine, one of the better mid mid to early round, I guess I'm still calling it an early round, but mid to early round matchups if it was going to be Red Raiders and Cougars. Not saying that's what I want. I don't mind a snoozer where Texas Tech blows somebody out by 30. But yeah, there's a lot of love for BYU. They're a number, what, five on the list of uh, Big 12 tourney favorites. It's, it's funny because the computers love BYU, okay? And I'm not exactly sure why. It's, it's really remained this way. If you look like it at BYU versus Texas Tech on paper, the one difference is they have a, a big non-conference win over San Diego State, and you don't really have anything like that. And so I think your quad one and quad two, I think your nine and nine and your quad two and quad one games total, I think BYU is 10 and nine. The one difference is, is the is the win over um, uh, San Diego State. You have a head-to-head -head win over them and, and all that. But, but it's fascinating when you talk about BYU because they were – I think the only team in the top eight of the league standings not to have a player represented on the first, second, or third team of the All-Big 12 teams. Mm. Uh, they finished fifth here, legit. And I think that's the scary part about their group is that it's it's a team. There's not any one guy that just carries it. They've got a lot of weapons. Uh, it's very outside the box. If, just to give you an idea of their depth, 
they are one of two or three teams in the country this year that have had eight different players score 20 or more in a game. Think about that. They've had eight different players on their team score 20 or more in, in, in a game this year. And that just speaks to kind of the problems that they pose. They've got – it's kind of like, you know, Mark Pope played at Kentucky, and so in an era when the three-point shot was really kind of coming on and you use this as a weapon and people were kind of changing the way that they played. So they've incorporated that, but they also use a lot of that – that that old Princeton backdoor stuff, it's a pain to play against. I, and I remember saying when they were there in Lubbock, I'm like, and and I think they were just beating you up in the first half. You survived that game. It took a superhuman effort by Pop Isaacs. I think he went for 32 <laughs> that night, and that was uh, one of the best games maybe we had ever seen him play. He just was like not going to let his team lose, you know, kind of deal. And, but I remember saying, oh, I don't want to see these guys anymore. It was just, again, pain to deal with. And they go win in Lawrence when nobody does. Uh, they almost beat uh, Iowa State in Ames right there at the at the end. They, they, they get beat, uh, which, you know, Iowa State did not lose a home game. And, and so, you know, they, they didn't survive the trip to Lubbock. But what you're going to be dealing with, too, is not it, – it's a team that's firmly in the tournament. However – they have some serious motivation. It's funny, too, because I think actually they have talked amongst themselves about wanting some revenge against Texas Tech. They're the one team that that BYU didn't beat in the conference this year. Um, yeah, well, that them and I think Tech and Houston were the only two teams. But uh, they, they want they want another shot at you. But they're really playing for the right to, to go to Salt Lake City in, in the first and second mm. rounds, which are – it's 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 45 minutes away. It's up the road. Yeah. This is like Tech trying to get to Dallas, uh, but maybe even more of an example. I mean, it'd be like Tech trying to play a home game at home, uh, you know, in the NCAA tournament, which would never happen. But I mean, Salt Lake City and that NBA arena, it's just it's literally like right down the street. And they've got first and second uh, round matchups there. And I think the, the better your seating, the more geographical it is. And so that's what, what, you know, they have at stake here. So you're going to deal with a very motivated BYU team if that's who survives uh, later on today in that matchup. And I, they're going to be a handful, bottom line. I mean, but I like your chances. I, I just, it's it, you know, just come down to who makes shots. But, uh, you know, the Egyptian magician, uh, you got all kinds of uh, things going on there with the, the whole BYU and their passing big men and all that stuff. I was hoping we were going to get to a mention of the Egyptian magician. <laughs> um, and who knows, you know, BYU doesn't have to win the game. People have not lived up to expectations before as well. So uh, still that possibility. I was curious overall, Chris, who you thought behind Texas Tech around at the top 10, UT, Texas, Christian, Oklahoma, Kansas State. Um, I think some people would look at Kansas as a potential plummeter as far as their chances, given the obvious news of Dickinson uh, and McCuller, though it seemed like some of the odds were remaining the same, even with those guys sideline. Um, but I wonder if there's a potential riser or if you see somebody else maybe uh, that's got your interest outside of Texas Tech or outside of the obvious in Houston and Iowa State. Well, you know, this the teams like Houston and Iowa State per se don't – these are kind of – this is a conference tournament that there's just not a whole lot to gain out of the deal. Um, you know, you can only I – don't, I don't even know if you can really hurt your situation. Um, and I'll BYU – I mean, excuse me, uh, Iowa State may want to get that bad taste out of the mouth of the, if they're losing to Manhattan and try to get some rhythm back and, and, and whatnot. But um, the, for, for like Tech, the the Baylors, you know, uh, all that, I think that they're, they're good tools. For teams like Kansas State and teams like, you know, Cincinnati – it's your one last remaining opportunity to put something together and try to go on a bit of a run and try to work your way back onto the bubble if you can. Uh, but this is Houston's tournament until, you know, and that's kind of who you, you know, if you, if you advance past this, it's probably who you're staring at. Uh, and, and we'll kind of see, I, I, you know, again, these games are called differently. I don't think they're going to let, you know, on a neutral floor, let Houston kind of maul you like they do in, uh, you know, those games at the Fertitta Center. Uh, and so maybe that benefits you a little bit. Uh, but I don't know if I, you know, I, I think I'll be interested to see how Baylor bounces back. Um, I think Texas is kind of a, I hate saying that. I think they could be kind of a tricky team in this tournament. Uh, I think TCU 
has has gone some runs in this tournament before, and they are finishing the regular season with, with laying an egg against uh, Cincinnati at home. Uh, they, you know, th- the deeper teams, it benefits. Mm. You know, yeah. I, I think, and, and you're not necessarily one of those, which is why the double buy was so key. The injured teams, it, it, it doesn't benefit. But the deeper team, uh, you know, the team that can kind of go on these runs and that it, it's got a variety of different ways they can they can play, uh, I think that that's kind of who this, you know, benefits. So, you know, if you're looking for somebody off the radar a bit, not that they're off the radar, but like a yeah. TCU or a Texas would, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they're – but, I mean, I'll still point to like an Iowa State or – or, or Houston as being the scariest teams in this deal. But like sure. a team like Tech could could do some damage here for sure. Yeah, let's uh, hope only damaging others. No further damage to the Red Raiders as we have been uh, kind of walking a high wire in a precarious position uh, seemingly all the while with the early <laughs> loss of uh, Cambridge and then and then obviously uh, Warren Washington still with his impending return. And, and the thing that I look, always look at these, if you go win a game at this deal, it's a positive trip. If you go lose your first one, it's like, oh, you know, that 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 sucked. I mean, so, yeah. but if you win it, if you win a game, no matter what else happens, I think, you know, you know, granted now it, it's, it, it's, it, if it seemed like Houston were to lose in the semis to a Tech or a BYU or whoever, they may not necessarily feel as good about it because they were probably supposed to pick to win the whole thing. I just think most teams, if you go win at least one game and get a chance to play two, that's a productive trip. You know, yeah. where if you go one and done, it, it's just tough to, to stomach. And I've been a part of both sides of these over the years uh, to where you, you've rolled into this thing with kind of some expectation. You've rolled into it where you're just like hoping to stay around. And like I didn't pack too much because I knew it was going to be a, a shorter trip. Um, you know, you, you, you beat uh, West Virginia years ago when Tubby was the coach and you were, you, you were just like, your season was going to end whenever you lost your, your, your first game in Kansas city, unless you won it all, you go pull off an upset and then got your head kicked in the next day by Kansas. Uh, but you know, the, the, these are fun when there's some expectations here, but you also know you're not stressing out about Sunday, you know, Sunday, you're going to see your name, mention you've got another game to play after this weekend but it can be it can be a fun little run to go on and create some momentum for you and work a guy like warren back into the mix um and i as we get closer i just boy i really lean to thinking that he's going to give it a shot here that's that's really good to hear and uh so there's not any room for any other less than stellar news than that (laughs) I think it's time to shift the conversation let's go ahead and leave basketball there on that high point um, and, of course, we'll be back to uh, set the table for Grant McCaslin and the fellas to take the floor on uh, tomorrow's episode. But uh, as we finish here today, Chris, I, I want to take you to Friday night, and I'm sure that many football fans have uh, seen this by this point in time. First, today's episode brought to you by FanDuel, and the sports calendar keeps turning, and the action never stops with America's number one sports book and the official sports book of Locked On. And right now, new customers get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet. That's one hundred and fifty bucks if your bet hits. There are so many ways to spice up any action with their safe, secure, and easy to use apps. So get to fanduel.com slash locked on. And if you're a new customer, take advantage of $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet with FanDuel at fanduel.com slash locked on. Official partner of the NBA. I want to take you to Friday night, and I'm sure that many football fans have uh, seen this by this point in time. Uh, and I think it generally is uh, rooted specifically now, aside from, um, you know, something else that could, I guess, come into the wind or develop uh, with Fox, the Big Ten, Big 12 and the Mountain West playing Friday night college football games. Uh, there's a television package there to be broadcast where Fox is going to have a game every Friday night. Uh, obviously, the Big 12 uh, conference, not on its own, uh, but among those others will be a part of that rotation. And Clearly, from a, a Texas Tech standpoint, I think considering the state that we are in, maybe a little bit different than uh, in some other locales. I know there's a lot of high school football love in a lot of places. But I don't know that it all uh, has been so revered as it has been uh, in the great state, Chris. But I'm, I'm kind of wondering if, um, you know, the fervor against this or, or kind of the emotion that was maybe in this conversation a few years back has waned a little because we've already gotten some tastes of this uh, over the years. Not as regular, I guess, as it will be, but... I don't know if that fight plays out the same now as maybe it did five years ago or, or 10 years ago, or if it's 
something that uh, fans can expect to become accustomed to, like a lot of other things. Yeah, you, you know, uh, you, you played on uh, one Friday last year, if not two, right? Uh, you played Texas on a Friday after Thanksgiving. Did you Did you not play another that was one? the blackest Friday. Uh, uh, I thought it was Thursday night. Or okay, yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. The t- yeah, so you played two non – that's what I meant. Two non-Saturday yeah. games. This, this is the Friday night thing is is part of the Big Twelve contract. It's going to happen at some point. Texas Tech is going to be involved in one of these games. I think it's tricky for Joey to be in such a, a high profile member of the Texas High School Coaches Association and, and all that because you don't want to feel like you're you're doing anything to take away from high school football. But it it, it is it's different in this state, you know. And I think Tech fought really really hard to not be included in that at least initially and they're not um there's as i looked at the list there's four games that are already locked in for a friday night and then there's six games that are have the opportunity to be flexed into a friday night game it does not none of them involve texas tech um and 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 i i think you know i don't know if you've ever would mind if you're playing on the friday after thanksgiving that's kind of a bit different most that you're in well into high school playoffs by then I'm just, I think you're talking about like in the September, October ish, you know, range where it just, man, be a tough sell uh, in Lubbock, Texas, with as much as there's going on with high school football in general, just around your city, trying to host a game on a Friday night in September, October, you know. Um, and, uh, but you, you've, you kind of, I think, really requested that, pushed for it, and, and you were granted that, I guess, request. Um, I don't know. But with, with these leagues expanding, Big 12 and the Big 10, and then Fox not doing anything with WWE SmackDown. There's your first uh, <laughs> WWE SmackDown reference uh, on uh, Locked On Texas Tech. So you can mark that off your bingo card if you've been waiting for that for all this time. They have. But there's no media rights deal with that uh, program anymore this fall. And that's been on network television, SmackDown has for the last three or four years, I think every Friday night from seven to nine o'clock. Well, now they are going to put football on there and you're going to see some fairly high profile games played over the course of time by some of these big 10. And I think uh, big 12 teams, it's not going to be just the the throwaway games. I think they're going to try to put some emphasis on it. Uh, and, but they've got time to fill. And, you know, like, as I look at it now, TCU, BYU, Oklahoma state, Colorado, Utah at, at UCF, Arizona at Kansas State is a possibility. Houston at TCU, Utah at Arizona State, uh, Oklahoma State at BYU, West Virginia at Cincinnati, and then uh, Houston at Arizona. So there's a lot of league contenders in there. There's a lot of the the, the higher profile teams in the Big 12 that are that are listed there. Texas Tech just doesn't happen to be one of them, and uh, I think they liked it that way. Yeah, it ought to be interesting to see how this plays out and who's uh, being forced into what slots in some of the early years because you never know – for how long something may remain the same. But I guess uh, it's going to be here to stay because, th- like I said, there's already been several years in the rear view. I know Baylor's played some Friday night uh, out of conference and games and things like that. Yeah, for whatever reason, there was, I guess, a different sentiment early on about Thursday. Maybe it's just uh, high school football related, even though there's some of that happening on Thursday uh, here or there as well. But I'm kind of just thinking as a fan, like some other things that have changed and now we're accustomed to uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Maction or whatever. Um, it's probably going to be something else we just become sort of accustomed to. And even though it's not as good as playing on Saturday as far as what you're able to put on, the party a fan can have, the environment you can put on, we were already kind of dealing with that on Thursday. Uh, and really, here's the cure, here's the solution. No big deal for Joey McGuire. Just win, baby. They're going to show up on whatever night of the week if you got a program that's uh, doing some interesting things. So. I'm not mad that we're left off this list for now, but I'm kind of bracing for when uh, Texas Tech definitely will not be left off. Yeah, and, and schools ultimately don't want – they ultimately – it's it's a it's a two-way street here. No, nobody wants to be on these off nights. Every school wants to have a traditional Saturday game in the middle of the afternoon or evening. You know, nobody wants the 11 a.m. kick. Nobody wants to be on a Thursday or Friday uh, or anything like that um, because it's harder to get, you know – Students there, it's it's a pain with your campus and all the coordination that comes with, you know, maybe season ticket holders that are a bit far away that just can't get there on a weeknight. Okay, however, all these schools do want Texas Tech included. You want the the TV money that comes with these scenarios, and this is part of your your TV contract. 
um, is that you will provide enough content for some of these off nights. And over the course of time, everybody will be involved. Um, and so just because I think Texas Tech was probably able to say, hey, man, we played a Thursday night game last year and a Friday game. Leave yeah. us off the list. You know, but next year we may be singing a different tune here. Um, you know, and and, and I, I've always loved it when you're like the road team on so, on one of these off nights because yeah. – the same situations I'm describing, harder to get fans and all that, you know, and all that. You you, you can, you know, that, that's to your benefit when you're the road team. You don't play in front of a hostile environment. You 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 know, and there's the the built-in buys and stuff that come with, with with the way that these schedules can work out. But anyway, this is coming. This is part of the deal. It's been uh, talked about quite a bit over the last week or so as you kind of started to see what games have been selected for Fridays, what games could be flexed in into Fridays, but the the Red Raiders not on the list, which I think please everybody around uh, Lubbock and Texas Tech. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the uh, dust settles on that and certainly interesting to see how everything gets settled in Kansas City and we're back hard and heavy uh, on a basketball front as it finally feels like March truly arrives. I mean, March 1st through whatever, I don't even know, are those real March days or is that just late, late February? Uh, but whenever you got basketball going down midday, uh, March has truly begun, I think. So we'll be there or at least on the cusp of it next time we have our uh, conversation, Chris, and uh, looking forward to it as always, man. Safe travels. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, I'll be talking to you from the T-Mobile Arena or the the downtown Marriott or something uh, or parts in, parts unknown in between. I don't know, maybe some barbecue joint. Thank you, everybody, for subscribing. Those are very valuable to Casey and I, those numbers, just to keep this thing going. We, we certainly appreciate it. And comment away, man. We love interacting with the folks uh, in, in the comments as well. No doubt. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts so you can do just that and never miss an episode. For Chris, I'm Casey, and we hope to see you back for the next round on Locked On Texas Tech.